The very idea that Britain's best-known book imprint, owned by Pearson, should join up with what's already the world's largest publishing stable, owned by German entertainment giant Bertelsmann, was greeted with alarm among authors, agents, and some bookshops. But it turns out this isn't so much a story about ambitious blockbuster publishers. It's that almost nine out of ten books read online are bought through Amazon, and on this platform, publishers have far less power. Until now, the competition authorities would have been really unhappy at the very idea of Random House merging with Penguin. But now it really is about surviving the onslaught of books being downloaded to e-readers. And the idea is that a combined company would have more market power to challenge the likes of Apple and Amazon, who have been calling all the shots. But this industry commentator says the deal won't necessarily boost trade publishing earnings. It's a bit flaky, a trade publishing, but it can still be attractive. It's a little bit out of fashion at the moment, but I think it will come back, particularly as uh, the bigger groups realise that there's now a global platform, a global platform of English readers that we can now get to because of the e-book and the digital infrastructure we've got in place. Not all writers are alarmed. This one, whose latest book is about the breakdown of a media marriage, says consolidation in consumer publishing looks inevitable. As a self-publishing author, if you agreed only to publish digitally through Kindle, you will get better deals and, and certain benefits. So, uh, funnily enough, the, 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 the same technology that makes it easier to be a self-publisher is also ushering in a kind of new age of conglomerates as well. So next, all eyes will be on groups like Macmillan, Hachette, Simon & Schuster and HarperCollins. Could the industry big six become the top two? Nigel Cassidy, BBC News.